All right, good afternoon traders. Uh, thanks for joining and taking your time to check out this week's trading webinar. Uh, right off the bat, per usual, quick test of audio and visual. If you can hear my voice and see this opening slide, go ahead and type a Y in the chat box for me. All right, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Gary. Very cool. Uh, be sure to use the chat to ask any questions throughout the webinar, and we'll get to those throughout and after the presentation. Uh, I'm here with Zach White, our co-founder, as well as our friend Will Bisbee, who is the founder of Pure Financial Academy. Uh, now, most of you should be familiar with my voice by now, uh, but for any first-time viewers or PFA members, my name's Ty. I handle the business development here at Shark Indicators, and I've been involved in the trading industry for several years now. And I'm coming at you guys from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, before I pass it off to Will, let's take a quick look at the risk disclosure. So take a minute and look this over. Futures, foreign currency, and options trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. And uh, just to answer the question that I know is coming, uh, this webinar is being recorded. So just look for an email from Ty at Shark Indicators, and I'll get the recording out to you guys by tomorrow morning at the latest. So give your attention to Will. Uh, he's going to cover some very useful information about supply and demand, and you'll see how the PFA zones pair up with Blackbird and Bloodhound for some powerful trading. So at this point, Will, I'm going to promote you to presenter so you can introduce yourself to some of the shark audience here, and then you can get right into it, my friend. Okay, I appreciate it, Ty. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, yeah, I see. So it, it did indeed go over into presenter mode. Excellent. Um, First and foremost, as always, thank you so much for the kind introduction, guys. It's always a pleasure to be in these events, especially uh, this one being the first with the guys over at Shark Indicators. So, again, thanks, uh, Ty, for, for taking your time out of your day. Zach, also yourself, appreciate you guys being here. For everyone else, ironically, I'm looking through the list here, and I do indeed see a lot of our uh, see a lot of our members. So. Thanks for showing up, guys. It's kind of cool because you guys will be here. Um, and I always like that because, um, you know, it's kind of one of those things. If I say I said something, you know, it's nice to have someone there to, to say, no, he actually said that. Or no, he didn't. You know, who knows? Uh, but let me see if I can get you guys out to the uh, to the screen here real quick. Um, Ty, can you just let me know if you're seeing a disclaimer there? Yep. We are seeing the disclaimer. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. So obviously we want to get started with this, guys. As you all know, I'm sure you've been in many, many of these webinars and all of that fun good stuff. So trading contains substantial risks and uh, it's definitely not for everyone, right? Uh, an investor could potentially lose all or more of their initial investment. The capital or uh, risk capital is money that can be lost without with jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle and so on and so forth, right? So we want to be very mindful that there's, you know, obviously lots and lots of risk in trading. We can lose all just like we can make a lot. And so it's all of that good stuff, uh, good fun stuff. We're not a registered uh, broker or CTA, so I want to throw that out there. Okay, so as we go ahead, let's just go ahead and get forward. I'm, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a... Um, kind of a bullet point, if you will, on what the event is going to entail. And then we're just going to kind of zip through it. I'm going to try my best to get through it as quickly as possible. The reason is because I want to get you guys out to the live charts in which we're going to actually run through some, um, for example, uh, the last, I mean, the, the absolute last data that I could grab was yesterday. So we're going to go through uh, yesterday's data and put this into use so that you can actually see you know, how it works um, uh, using, of course, Blackbird and uh, Bloodhound, right? So some pretty cool stuff. Bear with me. I know these first few slides are not the, the most fun, but I promise you it'll be worth it uh, after a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started without rambling on, guys. First and foremost, uh, you know, my name is Will Busby. I am the founder, uh, as Ty pointed out, of Your Financial Academy, which is an online trading community uh, dedicated to supply and demand order flow methods. I'm sure most of you are probably already aware of this, but if you're not, you know, uh, you know, please feel free to navigate around our website. Uh, the URL is down there at the bottom. It's simply purefinancialacademy.com. And there's also our contact information. So, you know, we're more than welcome and we'd love to speak with any of you guys. All right. So what we, over time, guys, we've actually been around for quite a long time, been doing this for nearly a decade. Um, we've provided material and software to individuals who are simply looking to learn about trading, right? We want, our goal has always been to provide a sense of knowledge, um, you know, that quite frankly, maybe even we never thought possible, right? Again, that's our goal. We don't always achieve it, of course, but that is what we strive to do. 
we do believe in the power of having others on the same path as yourself there to support you. Uh, I think we all know the benefit in that. Learning together is key. We can kind of feed off of one another and so on and so forth. So our mission is quite simple. It's to provide a positive and effective environment for all traders and investors who do wish to utilize supply and demand trading methods, of course. Uh, and also it's nice when they want to share their experiences with others because we do want to form that team uh, environment. OK, so that's a little bit about us, guys. I'm sure that you, you know, again, probably a lot of you are already familiar. But if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. And speaking of which, throughout the event, I am so sorry, but there's so much material for me to get through. If you don't mind uh, the questions, if you hold them towards the end, I will absolutely stick around until they're done. And thank you for that. Thank you for your patience. So here's our presentation overview. We're going to talk about a couple things. Power Zone Zone Suite kind of go hand in hand. Uh, but we'll look at that in a moment. We're going to talk about the community, what it involves, course, live room, forum, et cetera. Okay. All right. So let's just get started with uh, a, a small summary, if you will, of our uh, just our, our simple beliefs, right? Our principles in the market, if you will. They are indeed supply and demand, as I mentioned before. And I know that most all of you are familiar with supply and demand trading at this point. It's been around um, you know, for quite a while. As I said, we've been doing it uh, for nearly a decade. And we've uh, had software development uh, throughout the entirety of that time. So we indeed are one of the older of the bunch uh, in here. And, and uh, I would encourage you guys to go out, maybe view some of our uh, videos, maybe YouTube channel, things like that. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll see some of our stuff even, even going way back. Um, and hopefully that's advantageous for you all. So to, to talk about supply and demand uh, briefly, it's our belief that masses this is important, not just order flow, but masses of order flow control the movement of price for any financial market. So for example, today in the room, right, we looked at Bitcoin. Uh, well, that's a you know crypto new market, but it's still relevant. And we can absolutely uh, determine that on, again, any financial market. So to uh, excuse me, to increase the probability of locating the masses, we incorporate a methodical approach using that supply and demand zone theory, right? It's to, to represent where the where the masses of order flow, if you will, where they're most likely to exist. Now, again, we say most likely because nothing's 100%. We're, we're definitely no crystal ball and we can't predict things, but with probability on our side, uh, it, it definitely helps, right? So what we're doing is we're producing a forward thinking analysis. We obviously can't make money from the past. Um, well, I mean, it, from hindsight, if you will, we can't make money that way. We've got to make it going forward. Uh, the zones are used for that, right? So we can use the zones looking forward to help us uh, add that probability that we're looking for. Okay, so when to, to simplify this, and again, this is very basic, so I'll run through it real quick. I, I, I'm pretty sure most of you are, are familiar with this, but when qualified supply zones, note the word qualified, uh, when they are reached, the expectation is that price is going to drop. Okay? So, you know, more sellers than buyers, price goes down, right? Uh, when we find qualified demand zones, when they're reached, our expectation is that price will rally or go higher. So quite simply, supply is above. And uh, as some common terminology that goes you know, forever and ever, amen ago, uh, support and resistance, right? So support and resistance, if you know, everyone's familiar with that. So resistance is above current price. The same goes for supply. While we personally believe that they're unique and different and each of them have their own components, supply and resistance do have that in common. They're both above uh, current price, whereas demand and support are both below. All right, so when we're talking about order flow or that mass we were talking about earlier, we said there, we believe that there's masses of order flow that do control the markets. The first of which is historical. And these orders, uh, this is simply the orders that were placed at a previous time, right? Being historical. Uh, they were never executed though. So let's say, for example, you placed an order at whatever price point and unfortunately price just left the area and did not fill your order right so that's a historical order that was left uh, or it was never executed right so we would call that an unfilled order so they still remain on the exchange and they're waiting to be filled does that mean that they all still sit there absolutely not guys i mean there's you know i would i would venture to say that most of them even get canceled with the exception of the institutions a lot of times when they place their orders, they know they're not all going to get filled because they have too many, right? The retail traders can't keep up. So, you know, for that reason, but let's, let's keep moving a little bit forward. I think you guys are going to enjoy the live charts a little bit more, right? So the first thing that we're looking at again is historical orders. These are orders that were previously placed that did not get filled. So that would have to be 
limit orders to the buy or sell side. It can't be a market order because by definition, those are filled instantaneously uh, to whichever side of the market. Uh, for example, a buy market would be filled on the buy side, a sell market being filled on the sell side, and those are instant orders. Limit orders can, uh, they have certain requirements around them that say we must meet this price or better. Okay, so that would be historical. Uh, the second of which is current orders. Now, current orders are orders that were placed, or excuse me, that are being placed as we arrive to a location. So they're actually happening, we would use the term, I guess, in real time happening you know, right now as we speak. They're placing those current orders. And this can indeed be market orders or stop orders, right? It could also be limit orders too. They could be placing a stop limit order, right? Buy stop limit, sell stop limit, uh, buy sell stop market, you know, things like that. Uh, but they're definitely happening um, in real time. Okay, so if we look at a, a bit of a graphic here, Notice that this circle or ellipse back there, those are representation of historical orders. And we know that because, you know, if you, you know, notice there, we've dropped away from it. So we've already left the area. So they can't be current because it's not happening as we speak. However, if we move forward, when we arrive at that area, the orders that are getting placed now, that's what we refer to as current orders. So definitely want to be aware of both of these because by combining both of the historical and current orders, the probabilities of the turning point actually occurring is substantially increased, right? So uh, it's like doing anything. He who holds the most wins and all of that good stuff. So if we can not really double, again, remember some of those historical orders do get canceled, but the ones that are still there, even if there's a handful of them, if they're combined with orders that are currently being placed as well to the same side, meaning both to the sell side in this example, you know, now we have more of the same thing, increasing our probabilities for an actual drop. Right? So that's where our zone theory comes in, right? We simply use rectangles, if you will. Zones is just the common terminology. But essentially, we're throwing a rectangle there, not to, not to literally pinpoint it I, to the exact tick, guys. This is to generalize the area. And we have to then say, well, are we will, willing to accept the risk of that entire area or do we need to reduce it down and so on? But what we use our zones for is literally to ref, uh, define and then we can refine the area that we're willing to actually take positions in. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me, guys. If I keep moving forward here, on the left, we have a representation of supply. Okay, this is a large mass of sellers and we know that because clearly price drops away from there substantially. So there is your zone theory. We can use that rectangle to literally just give us a graphical representation of where we're willing to take part in the market. And this is simple. We're, you know, it's not always as simple as buy low, sell high. I mean, it, it gets really way more in depth and complex, right? But at the end of the day, if we can generalize the area where we want to be the buyer or seller, then, you know, again, it's all about the probability. To the upside here, we have a large mass of buyers. We know that because price rallied away from there substantially. So it's, it's not possible for there to be more sellers there than buyers. It can't be because price went higher. So the equation is that we, you know, we obviously had more buyers than sellers, right? So we can use that. We can throw a zone on it. Now, please don't let me look at this already and say, okay, was well, that easy? And, you know, no. Absolutely not. Right now, we're just literally giving the most basic uh, thing. We're, we're putting a rectangle on a chart, guys. But in order to qualify these, which is we're going to start going into that, that's where it gets very important. So there's a lot to it. It's not just, you know, we don't just throw rectangles on it and throw some trades. But as we move forward and we talk about the qualifications and so on, it most likely it will make more sense. Not to mention that we have software doing it for us. So here we want to look at those buyers and sellers. Just so you're aware, this is the previous chart. The, there was supply on the left, demand on the right. This is the same chart. We just pieced it together. So here we have large historical selling, meaning remember what we talked about, those orders were historically placed. And what we have an expectation of is that there will be current sellers when we arrive back there. And the reason that we can have that expectation is simply because price dropped away from there heavily. Now look, on a price chart, we see it, it's so you know, in our face, but if you're not looking at a price chart, for most investors, I would venture to say that you know, are not traders, they're investors, they don't ever look at a price chart like this. Maybe they look at a line chart or something, but they, they probably don't even go into depth into the technical analysis. So what they hear 
is, oh man, on CNBC, you know, price dropped away from that 2000 area substantially. We had a huge decline. Well, what they hear from that is the number 2000. They don't see it and it, it doesn't resonate with them visually, but they heard it. So the number 2000 is stuck in their mind and it is just there. So for us, we have a leg up on them because we can literally see it. I don't have to remember that number because it's on the price chart and I can go, you know, see that visually anytime I want. So here's that same area of demand, right? Large historical buying. And so our expectation now is that, well, historically, if we rallied away from there strongly, then why would we not do it again? Okay. So let's get through these few last slides and we're going to get out to the chart. Um, not to cover too much about the basic stuff. I'm sorry for that, but I do want to get everyone on the same page. So here where we're talking about anticipation, talking about anticipating order flow on the actual price chart, right? And I love that this is, I love this slide. I always talk about it, but the, this is the formation of historical buyers. So the historical orders likely still exist due to the fact that it had a very fast departure leaving no time to, we can't fill orders if we're leaving an area very quickly. In other words, you've probably heard the terminology, don't chase the trade. Well, if price is leaving, don't, you know, we don't go up and chase it. We leave our orders where, where it was. Uh, and so that's what you end up with, with this right here. So you can see that big white candle there. That's your departure. So the formation of the current buyer. So we've been talking about two types, historical, now the current. We see this, meaning this level that the arrow is pointing to. We see it as a level who obviously was controlled by the buyers. There's likely going to be willing buyers there again, expecting the same thing as us, that history will repeat itself. So therefore we can anticipate an entry at that specific location. Okay. Now history is indeed likely to repeat itself. And we've seen this time and time again. I know we all have. However, it's important. Each repetition, decreases those historical orders at minimum, meaning they may not even be there, right? But if they are there and we keep hitting them, every time we go there, we're filling more of them and more of them. So eventually, even if the level continues to work out, it's all based on current orders then, not historical. And our methodology dictates we want to have both, not just one. So again, increasing the probability. Okay. All right. So here, guys, we'll talk about refining the imbalance location. We have the historical uh, buyers, the unfilled orders, plus the new buyers that anticipates our, uh, our entry, right? So I, I love this portion when it talks about the formation of demand, because in order for us to really know that demand exists, it actually has to battle the opposing. Let's just say that price rallies, right? Well, how do we know that in the middle of that move or at the bottom or at the top or wherever it is, how do we actually know that there was a lot of buyers and not just a few of them, right? I mean, it, you could have had no sellers and one buyer and price is just gonna go higher, right? So to understand how we determine when there's a lot of them, that is because there must be a battle. The battle must take place, right? Uh, so demand must quickly exceed the supply, the same for vice versa. The sellers must quickly exceed the buyers, right? But in this image here, we would say the buyers must quickly exceed those sellers to determine the strength of that demand. So we know the demand is there because it takes out the supply, but how long does it take to achieve that goal? And the longer that it takes, the, the less and the weaker that area becomes, okay? All right, cool. So finally, we have our, I just threw up a slide here to just, introduce, if you will, our power zones and, and zone suite. So as I said, we've had this uh, around for a very long time and you're probably more familiar with the power zones because that was back, uh, that was in Ninja Trader 7. And uh, so I know that a lot of you are more familiar with Ninja Trader 7 and not quite moving over to Ninja Trader 8 yet. Totally understandable. And uh, so basically these are tools designed to reduce the subjectivity. It's not a get rich quick guys. Trust me when I tell you that, right? It's not designed to do all of the work for you. It's designed to make your life easier, reduce the subjectivity when it comes to this. So they, uh, the zones in themselves use the couple of just the key factors in the, the algorithms, if you will, price recognition, volume changes. We're going to look at this in a moment uh, and market volatility. Those are just a few of them and they relay the information that they're receiving on the price chart with those rectangles, as I mentioned earlier, as well as other custom graphics too. Okay. Uh, they can be used for enhanced confluence purposes, meaning you may already have a strategy that rocks 
you don't want to change it, right? I wouldn't. I mean, if you have a strategy that's working, yeah, you know, you know what the saying is, right? It's not broken, don't fix it and all that. But maybe you have a strategy that's almost working, but you're missing one component. Um, it is my opinion that this might be that missing component. Um, and not just the software, but the methodology in general too, okay? Maybe, but that, that is definitely at your accord. I would encourage you all to maybe after today, just kind of go take a look and see if it would benefit you. So um, another thing you can do is track the historical calculations. They are fully back testable. So what I'm saying there is you can take your strategy and you can literally back test it with all of this because it, we store all of the, the um, internal data uh, historically, meaning that you can put it on the price chart and go back and see what actually happened. Okay, so a uh, couple more slides here. This is where we're getting into the nitty gritty. What you're seeing here before we go out to the live charts is this is just an introduction to Bloodhound. Okay, this is how our software and Bloodhound work together to give you obviously very straightforward signals. You can see those, um, those uh, green and red stripes there, the vertical stripes. What that is in our case is simply retests of either a buy or a sell zone. So without spending too much time here, why don't we skip through this and just look at it on a live chart, yeah? Okay, same goes for this. This is going to be, you know, your Blackbird, uh, this is your order management. And it's great, I have an image here, and I want you to see it, see how our software, you know, looks with it and all that good stuff. But I think you'll enjoy getting out to the live charts a little bit more. Uh, it probably will probably will be more advantageous, right? So um, I do I do love, I would say that I use, you know, I personally uh, have used uh, Blackbird uh, a lot and I enjoy using it because uh, for the obvious reasons, but I think you'll see in just a moment when we're actually going through it. Um, all right, guys, so why don't we do that now? Let's go ahead and pop out to the live charts and uh, give me just one moment here if you don't mind. Um, and before this, guys, just so you know, so we're going to we're going to be looking in NinjaTrader 7 here. OK, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at NinjaTrader 7 uh, with the power zones. And then I'll give you an introduction to uh, the PFA zone suite towards the end of the session as well. I do want to just go ahead and note here, guys, that the power zones NinjaTrader 7 here. Uh, great. Absolutely great. But I do want you to understand that it's it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that our PFA zone suite does. What we did, so we, you know, all the software was there in NinjaTrader 7 for many, many years. But in NinjaTrader 8, we'd made the conscious decision to do more of a combination type of thing. In other words, put them all into one. So uh, so this is this is our basic version of the power zones here, readily available for NinjaTrader 7. OK, what I'm going to do, guys, if you notice down here on the timestamp, so this is market replay. I'm running it from yesterday. Again, this is the I, I couldn't you know, this is the most recent data that one could possibly get. So when we're looking and this is probably where we're going to start having a little bit of fun when we're actually looking at trading, this is where we really get into our methodology and we start talking about, you know, are we looking for buy opportunities, sell opportunities, neither um, both. You know, I mean, it could go all over the board. Right. And, and it's not just that way. It, there's a very methodical approach to it. And we look for sell opportunities at specific location, buy opportunities at specific locations. And then we literally just gravitate between those locations in a trending fashion. And our goal, if we choose to trade, you know, within the context of those areas is simply to, you know, I think do the obvious, right? It's to get on board with the direction. So, uh, but anyway, again, this is what you're seeing here. So what you see on the right side of the chart there, uh, this is Blackbird for those of you who are not perhaps already familiar with it. Now, Blackbird uh, is going, it's order management, right? There's so much that it can do. And I'll let the guys, you know, I'll let, uh, you know, perhaps Zach and them get a little bit more in depth with that because even I guys, this, this is some very in-depth uh, software. Uh, kudos to them for their developments. So there's a lot that I don't know. OK, but what I do know is what I like to use about it. And I like to use it because it gives you that. Um, remember, we're all visual. We like to see things and it gives you the visual aesthetics that I can manipulate my orders before they're uh, before the actual entry is filled. A lot of times you guys are familiar with NinjaTrader uh, ATM strategy. You can't do that. You have to place your you know, entry order and then wait until you're filled to move your stops and targets. And, you know, it can be, uh, you know, a little bit exhausting because you have to be there if you want to move them, right? Well, with, with Blackbird here, we don't have to do that. We can go ahead and move them uh, in advance. Therefore, we, it's more of a set and forget type of uh, approach, if you will. 
So we have, uh, again, we have data running here. And what I want to do, as I said, this is market replay. I just want to speed it up just a little bit. Uh, but actually, let me backtrack. Before I do that, I want to give you guys a, a brief understanding of how and why we do things without really trying to do some whole education thing here. But basically, look over here on this chart. Now, this is a daily time frame. And what's funny, and I, I, again, there are people in the room here, a lot of people from our, uh, the current members, if you will, and they can contest this. What's funny about it is I, you know, basically I've been looking for one thing all week. Uh, and we're in class Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and and we literally have, you know, we've covered many markets, and there's, you know, many other trades and stuff like that. Uh, I wouldn't say many. There was uh, a few this week, though, uh, specifically today, actually, that may or may not have gotten filled. I don't even know because I don't trade all the markets. That being said, uh, they can contest to to what I'm saying here because it's it's almost humorous to me. We were basically waiting for one thing all week, and you know, kind of the last day we finally get to, to talk about it. And if you notice over here, this is how methodical and simple it can be. So we, myself, I was looking to sell the market. Okay. Whereas a lot of people may have been looking to buy. That's perfectly fine. Cause you know, price went higher and all that. Everyone has their own way of doing it. So on the right side of the chart, however, if you notice we're coming up into this huge blue zone there, well, that huge blue zone represents sell orders. That's where a lot of people, were willing to sell last time. So if we talk about those historical orders, this is what we're running into, right? So look at it like that. The historical orders are absolutely there. And we know that for a fact now because price has already proven itself. Okay. So what I, my thought process and what I indicated in the room was one thing I was looking for us to reach that area and for supply to exceed demand and so on. And, you know, we, we'll look at that. The trade actually you're going to get to see uh, here in, in, uh, in the markets. So um, quite simple, right? We got up there. Now I want to go ahead and push the, the replay here. Same was applicable below guys. So if you notice this zone down here, that was where we were looking to be the buyer. This is where we were looking to be the seller. And in between, we use our zones and supply demand levels, of course, to get betwixt in between. In other words, I'm looking to buy down at this location. And if I want to continue buying on the way up, I can do so only if I'm with the context of the trend, right? until I get close to this area up here, then it doesn't make sense. My probabilities are just very, almost null, right? They, they really decrease. Okay, so I either wanna be in it from the beginning or I don't wanna be in it at all when it gets up into this point. I wanna actually consider doing the opposite. And that's what we were looking at. So let's speed this up just a little bit. My point here being is that if you are, and I'm explaining this because as we go through the, um, you know, how Blackbird and everything works, I want you guys to understand what I'm saying. Um, so if I speed it up, let's just, let's kind of speed this thing up a little bit. Uh, and you'll see now, first and foremost, I want you to notice right here what's happening. Okay. If you're a trend trader for all intensive purposes, I think it's very clear that we have an uptrend. Okay. So our zone is just printed. Uh, we'll talk about the qualifications uh, in a bit, but just so you guys know, this was not qualified for us for the obvious reasons of what I just discussed. But nonetheless, for a trend trader, you do have a demand level in the context of the direction. So I would not, and this is very important, I would never come up here and sell this level because there's no reason to. It's not qualified itself. There's nothing about it that's told me, hey, you gotta, you know, you know, winner, winner, chicken dinner, right? So you're still in that uptrend, in other words. And unless that trend is completely broken and we start to revert to the downside, we have to keep that in mind. So if anything, if you, I always use the terminology, you've had a gun to my head, what would I have to do? It's a good thing no one holds a gun to my head. That's, you know, I never try to do that, right? But at the end of the day, I would have to buy. But why? Well, because the trend is up and I can't predict when that trend is going to break. I can certainly have the location, as I said, the generalized location in mind, but I can't literally predict it as to exactly where that's going to take place, okay? So that being said, what I could actually do now, uh, one of the features of the zones is our uh, targets. So if I scrunch up the chart there, you can see multiple profit targets, okay? And because this level is coming up into this larger area, two things I want you to know. One, I would never actually place this trade, okay? Not live, I would never actually place this trade. Any of our members will tell you that. Two, um, I would much rather be the seller than the buyer. Okay, I just have to wait for it. 
But that being said, also our members will tell you that I, if I am not in a very high probability location, I would look to get out of a trade much quicker. So let's do this. Blackbird has the dynamic planning here. What I can do, the great thing about it is it literally connects to our data points coming from our uh, software, which is in this case, the power zones. So if you notice, it is our software that's printing the zones, all of, everything you see uh, except for the stripes, those vertical stripes, that's Bloodhound. Uh, but everything else you see is coming from our software. And you can see these data points, your entry, stop, and target. As I mentioned, there were multiple above. Okay, so what Blackbird does is it literally connects to those data points. Uh, essentially, it says, hey, power zones, what, you know, where should my entry and, you know, stop and targets be? All right. And so on and so forth. So it kind of goes through that whole thing and you can literally plan it out in advance. All right. So if we move forward in time. Uh, yeah, four, I'm going to speed it up a little bit more there. So if we move 100 times, that might be advantageous, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to pause, and let's see here. Um, let's see. It's on market replay data, guys, so perhaps it's not. Let me let another bar close. Give me just one second. Speed it up even faster. Okay, so what I want to go over here and do is see if I can plan along. There we go. So I just I needed the close of that bar. Okay, so here's what Blackbird does. Blackbird calls our indicator and it says, hey, you know, what's the values that you want me to use? And then it essentially just uses those values. So now what I have is a planned out trade, but it's not actually executed. So I need to go down here and execute this trade. But first, and I better do it quickly. Okay, so if you saw, I could move those profit targets and dynamically alter those as I saw fit. So let me just, move, again, I'm going to speed it up because I don't have much time here. Okay, so we will see, uh, and again, guys, this is just data from yesterday. <laughs> it's the, the most recent I can get. When you're do, doing uh, market replay data, you can only get the day before and uh, after that. So a little bit faster, maybe 200 times. What you're gonna see is the, you're gonna see the stop and the targets. There you go. Okay, so if I slow this down again, what we can do now is we can see that. You can see how they're stuck to our targets as well as our stop down there. And again, if I just take this and move it here, why would I do that? Well, for obvious reasons, right? Because I'd want to be out of this position quickly if I were to take it. Again, I want to reiterate, I personally would not. I don't want anything think, anyone thinking that I'm trying to make something look good when in fact it is not, right? At the end of the day, this would have never been a live trade for me, okay? Nor our members uh, unless they you know, choose to do it in a different way. So that being said, let's speed this up so we can maybe get to what I would and did actually place. So uh, moving forward. Uh, but guys, do you have any questions about Blackbird, what it's doing? Again, it's really connecting to our, our software and it's just asking, it's requesting the values. Okay. And it's literally allowing you to manipulate that in real time. Okay. In real time before, this is very important, again, before the trade is actually executed. All right. So what we can do now is we go, OK, great. That's you know, we see that and that's wonderful price moved up in our favor. What I want to focus on is how the zones are respected. That's way more important. So the zones are respected. That's that general area. We didn't try to go in there and say this tick or anything like that, but just the general area overall. So if I speed this up, you're going to like this part because this is where we literally are going to qualify something. This is how we actually trade, by the way. Give me just one second. So what you're seeing here is just, you know, again, this is price movement. This is the morning session. OK, so this is the uh, pre-market going. It's not quite 930 yet. So because I know this because our uh, the trade didn't actually trigger towards the end of our session. And in fact, we were on the 25,000 volume chart, which is what I trade typically. And I just happened to luckily look over at the 30,000. Uh, I'm excuse me at the 30 minute. OK, so here's what I now want to focus on because a zone just appeared, right? So now you're excited, perhaps. Big blue thing popped up, it looks pretty cool, I think, right? But at the end of the day, you can't validate supply and demand just because we see turning points or you know anything like that. I, mean, I guess you can, but is it the highest of probabilities, right? So what we do is we take that information and we say, okay, we see it, but 
if I'm going to risk our hard earned money towards doing something like that, I want to make darn sure that it is really something worth going at. Right. I mean, with every investment, that's real estate, anything. So let's just kind of watch this for a little bit. Um, and I, I want you to focus on something right now. What I want you to be focused on is this. We have demand here in the context of an uptrend. Now that's important. Let me turn these off. That's important because until that demand is exceeded by the supply, why am I risking money to the downside, right? That would be like trying to call the markets and that's not something that we would ever do. Okay. So right now, you, you know, this would not be, this would not be a trade. In fact, we talked about this yesterday in the room as it was happening on the 25,000 volume chart. Uh, so, and, and the great thing, if, you, if any of you guys decide to, you want to join our um, you know, room or anything like that, I'm not trying to throw that at you, I'm just saying, if you do, I would encourage you to go back and review today's recording, yesterday's recording and all that, because it's all recorded and you can, you know, you can see everything I'm saying. Okay. So that being said, this has not qualified. Why? Because there's no imbalance here. What do I know to be true? Well, I know there are sellers here. Okay. And what I can do is specify where they are. So if I turn on my volume analysis, all right, I can use that and this is going to adapt for me. You'll see what I mean just in a moment. And as we move forward, I can use the, this because it's displaying unfilled versus filled orders. And I want to, as I said multiple times, find the unfilled orders uh, and combine those unfilled with newly placed orders and that really increases our probability tenfold. But right now, all I know to be true for a given fact is that we have an uptrend and we have demand that is still intact. And that's that's probably the most important thing I could possibly say. So let me speed this up, uh, go a little bit faster here. And just kind of watch what's happening again. You see how this zone is being respected. It's telling you, hey, there's buyers there. Be, you know, be warned. All right. And notice how they keep rallying away from that thing. But uh, so it's just they're continuously respected. And that's why we use these areas alone for buying and in this case, selling above, right? We use those areas because that's the areas that are always going to give you the highest probability turning points. Now, you obviously have to apply your exit strategy as we do uh, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, we're simply looking to enter and exit based on these locations. Why? because they control the markets, right? So again, notice how many times this zone has been respected. Notice how this zone up here is being respected. All it's doing is gravitate. I call it the gravitational pull. It's literally going from one place to the other, meaning from one huge pile of orders to the next pile of orders, and then just that ongoing equation. That's literally all it does in the financial markets, guys, okay, in my opinion. Right. So a little bit faster maybe. I was going, you know, maybe let's go 100 times. Okay, so now what I want, there we go. This is the key point right here. So now what I know, because I already knew where the sellers were, right? We had the zone there, so on and so forth. The question was, are they stronger than the, than the buyers or the demand? We didn't know that. There was no way for us to know because the buyers just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. But what you just saw, all right, what you just saw is the, is the demand being exceeded by the sellers. So now I have two things working for me. Remember over here what I've been saying the whole time. We had this big blue zone up here. I have that confluence, which is where I really want to be the seller anyway. And over here, I have a new blue zone that's telling me, hey, this is where the sellers are current, right? Because remember, they rallied up to this larger time frame location, which had historical orders, and then they started placing new orders. So this is a combination turning point of historical and current orders. So what I can now do is I can go up here and I can hit my little button there and I can actually plan out a short. Okay. So if I, if I go ahead and plan out using the Blackbird dynamic planner there, I can, excuse me, I can plan my short trade. And I love the fact that they named it that because it is that simple that you're literally planning out your trade because right now none of this is actually, uh, execute it. I can do anything, manipulate it in any way I want to. So this is one of the golden things about the software. Again, I would encourage you guys to go check out some videos and all that good stuff. Uh, a lot of people have been using this for many years. And so uh, hopefully this is advantageous for, for you all. I think you're really going to enjoy it too when we look at the NinjaTrader 8 version. 
Uh, there's so, lots of bells and whistles there. But right now, the, just to give you a, a brief understanding of how we would use this, it's all about now the filled versus the unfilled orders, what has versus has not taken place. If you notice up here, these big spikes there, that's telling me that a lot of orders have been filled. So what I can do is literally manipulate my entry and or refine my risk up into the area where the unfilled orders reside. OK, now what I've done is simply reduced my risk, which is great. Right. I mean, less money at risk is always a good thing. And now what I'm doing, just so you guys know, I'm going to walk through this whole thing because based on this, I don't think the target ever gets filled. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we didn't we didn't fill the target yesterday. Uh, but I'll run it to the end of the data and then we'll look at what actually ends up happening. So right here, I'm planning out my trade. Now, currently, as it is, what I know to be true is that price has literally declined this far. So my factual statement here is that not one single order can exist back here. It's, it's an impossibility. It is not possible at all. Okay. And the reason that we know that is because let's say that there was a buy order back here and we came down to it. The second that we ticked below it, that order was filled no matter what it was filled, right? So all the way down, that's taking place until this exact price point of the 2707.50s, right there, as it is right now, this is subject to change. But what I do know now is that I have enough profit potential to get from here because this is my risk. My stop is always above or below the zone, above supply, below demand, okay? So this zone right here has already been respected very well. Um, this zone back here has already been respected very well. Okay. So I don't expect anything out of those anymore. Now, if they turn from there, that's great. And you know, more power to the zones. I love seeing it, but I'm still not going to trade it because of those diminished orders. That being said, let's move forward because what I want you to see is how price continues here. So over here, I'm just kind of, you know, speeding things up just so you guys know. Now, what I'm doing as we speak, right? As we speak, I am watching price and I'm saying, okay, here's the sellers. How far are they capable of going? So right now I know to be true that they can go that far. All right. So what I now know is that I can manipulate my profit target because I know price has already been this far. So for example, I can take my, my target and I can set it right there right now because I want to be out, you know, before I don't want to try to, you know, get all the way down here below because this is where potential buyers could still exist. I just don't know. All I, all that we want to do is what we do know. And right now price has moved this far. Great. That's all I know. Okay. So if I return to the zone on a sell order, I know that I have that much profit potential as it stands right now. Okay. So we're going to speed it back up a bit. And again, this is subject to change. You see how I moved that down. I could move it down even further, right? But I can't, and there we go. So now I could go ahead, you know, I could do something like this and now it's really moving. So I know for a fact that price has been this, you know, this low right there. I don't want to be there or below it. I want to be just above that area. Okay. So I would feel very comfortable and confident that price would repeat itself. History will repeat itself. I know where the sellers exist now. I know how strong they are and that's all the equation that I need as far as how to execute my trade. What I don't have right here is the most important part. And that is right here. Okay. This is the most important part, what happens over here. But basically I'm using this information. I'm looking over here. I'm letting the picture paint itself for me. And then I'm utilizing that. So now what I can do, I've already determined where my profit target is. And of course the, the lower one, I could move down, you know, to, uh, a further demand level. I would just have to, you know, find that, but I won't, sp I won't uh, spend time on that right now, guys. Okay. So what I could do though, is just move that one down, keep trailing price if it even goes that low. All right. And so I want to go ahead and execute that trade there. I just simply click that blue button. And now I've planned out my trade. I can simply turn off my, um, uh, I can turn off my targets here and I can also go ahead and turn off my volume because I no longer need it. It's already refined it for me. Uh, and so now I'm, I'm pretty good. So I'm going to move this, you know, a little bit faster, a couple hundred times there. So it's literally moving 200 times as fast as real time price did. 
you get your fill there, there's your target down below. There's really nothing more that you need to do, right? Because we made that conscious decision and we said, look, we know where the sellers are. We know how far they were capable of going. We know that they exceed the buyers. So there's really not much more that we need to know than that. All right. Um, and let's just move this as fast as it'll go. Cause I don't know, let's turn that puppy up to 500. Yeah. All right. So we love it. You know, Blackbird really gives us the speed and efficiency that we're looking for when, when it, when it comes to our order placement, we can enhance our trading by using it, uh, especially in combination with our zones. As you can see, there are also Bloodhelm is, is printing your red and green stripes. The green stripes uh, are simply from when we hit a demand level, the red stripes are from when we hit a, supply level. And of course, you, you know, there was one back here, but the demand zone, you can turn those on or off at any time. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So historicals are there, as I said before, you can uh, back test it fully back testable. All right. So 500 times, we're going to try to move forward a little bit faster. Uh, I don't think let's just, uh, again, that's as fast as I can go. So we're going to let that work out. Give it just a second guys. Okay, so as this is working out, let's do this to, for time efficiency purposes. Let's pop you over now to um, NinjaTrader 8. And before I do that, actually, yeah, so here you go. So that's the end of the day right there. So it's not going to print any more data. It's, it's essentially what well, I thought it was. <coughs> is that going into? No, that's still on the, four, the, the 18th, excuse me. Uh, so we're pushing... We'll just keep letting it run. But as we're going to go here, what we're going to do is go over to NinjaTrader 8. Um, and I want you to see the, uh, the bells and whistles, right? So first and foremost, we can look at a couple of the slides. Uh, and if I move forward really quickly here, I'm not going to spend hardly any time on this, guys. I'm going to show it to you on a live chart. we got the volume profile analysis, all that fun, good stuff. Um, there's the value area, highs and lows, point of controls. All of this is, you know, just stuff that's been there forever. You've seen a lot of this before. Uh, you know, again, we've had it for quite a long time. And so it's nothing new. It's just that I want to make you aware of it. All right. So we have a lot of things. And this is one of the things that I love. We do show the raw order flow at the levels. We show buy to sell ratios. We show the averages of all zones in comparison to this one. So boy, you can really get in depth with the order flow. We have manually derived volume data analysis or power zone, if you will. This you can use. So the every other one is automated in internally in every single automatic or automated zone form. Whereas these, you can literally manipulate and move anywhere you want. Now you can do that with the automatic ones too. You can change the size of them and move them. But obviously this is used in a different way. This is used more for swings and trends, thing to that nature. Okay. Uh, but all of that's built in. We have what's called an altitude grid market structure, which is pretty cool. I think a lot of people have liked that. Our market structure, if I go back here, notice how there's not a lot of swings within it because there are certain criteria points. This is definitely not a zigzag indicator, guys, just so you know. Okay. There's nothing like that. This, however, it fulfills requirements in order to even constitute a swing. So it really helps to simplify and clean up the chart quite a bit. Uh, we have automatic trend lines, one of the most subjective things in the world, right? <laughs> Everyone wants to know how to draw a trend line. So we actually uh, have done the best of our ability to do that for you. It is built into our software. Okay, we have FIB extension zones. You can paint bars and all of that good stuff. Um, starting to get into things that, you know, are not necessarily pertinent to, to look at today. This trailing stop, all of this is built into the software. This is a trade details box. It will pop up and, and it displays your entries and targets and stops and everything, as well as shows you the bid and ask data. There's your details. And this is real time barometer here. So as we're going in real time, you can literally see those numbers fluctuating back and forth and you can see where, you know, who's, who's really getting filled and who isn't. It's very nice to look at it in real time. Okay. So we have the software user interface. There's a drop down menu as, you know, again, it's been there for years and years. Uh, but just some things that you can see there. This is our user interface in the NinjaTrader 8 version. Um, we did it a little bit different and, uh, you know, we, we really enjoyed that. So we have all these zones uh, having buttons. So if you click the outline, you get an entire user interface in which you can control all of this functionality directly from the chart. All right. Um, our user interface just showing you that that is indeed on, um, on the power zone as well. Okay, so here we go. Let's uh, let's go over to NinjaTrader 8. First, I guess let's look at NinjaTrader 7 and let's see if it 
Okay, so it did indeed stop. So I just want you guys to be aware of that. None of that trade, it didn't actually fulfill itself, right? That's all the data I had. Uh, but the trade is underway. There's, you know, Target and so on and so forth. And we got to see how Blackbird allowed us to do that. Okay, so now if I pop over to NinjaTrader 8, <coughs> there we go. Okay, so this is Ninja Trade. And just so you guys know, I want to make you fully aware what you're seeing on the price chart. These are things we talked about today. Again, I would encourage you if you decide to join our room, just go back and take a look. You'll see everything that I'm saying right now. So, for example, today we had this if uh, this area right here of demand, I believe it was quarter uh, 87 quarter, I thought 87. I believe we said 87 quarter in the room. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. But today in the room, we said this is where price is likely to go. Okay, we found that there was demand there and we that's what that line is there. And then also that's our anticipation. So, um, so you, you'd see that if you basically go through our today's recording. Now, just so you guys know, I'm going to pop down to the 25,000 volume chart. This is my baby. It's what I really like is, again, those lines there. That's just that four hour level that we were defining today. And this is what we anticipated uh, price where, excuse me, this is where we anticipated price would go and where it would most likely stop. Okay. Well, not completely, but at least we would stop there for a bit. All right. And you can just see it over here. Uh, so how did we know that? Well, remember, look at the zones here. So here's our sell zone, right? We came up into it and we decline and notice that we're down into this demand level now. So we didn't have a long way to go. Okay. That was one thing to be strongly aware of. We talked about that in depth in the room today. Uh, and how we would not continue to be the seller after this. So in other words, here was our, okay, so that was the level you saw on the 30 minute chart. And then following that, the more, you know, you continue to sell, 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 the more aggressive you're getting. So we're not going to dive into all the methodology, but at the end of the day, we do cover it in that way or, you know, and, and especially as we progress guys, um, you know, all of us are designed to help each other, right? It's not a dictatorship. It's a democracy. And so we definitely all want to help each other. That's the purpose in being a community is, is exactly that. So our way is not the highway or it's whatever that saying is. Our way or the highway is not our philosophy. Our way is our way. We want to help everyone see our way and hopefully it can benefit them in a substantial way. That is our goal, 100%. But if it doesn't, you know, we, we will chalk it up to that, right? Because we can't help, you know, everyone, but we will never stop trying. All right, for sure. So I just wanted to kind of walk you through some of the software features here. This is NinjaTrader 8, as I said, I want to reiterate that. Okay, so NinjaTrader 8 has loads of bells and whistles. If you notice in the drop down um, menu here, guys, I'm going to try to push forward a little bit on time. We're, we're kind of running, eh, pushing the envelope, so to speak. We did get started a little bit late, so I think I'm okay. Maybe Ty and Zach will forgive me if I'm maybe five minutes late. Hopefully so. Hopefully they won't chew me apart. <laughs> That being said, guys, let's look at all this fun, good stuff up here. So we just have, I'm not going to go through everything because you have simple stuff like your price labels, right? All that uh, zone functionality. As I said, every zone has its own user interface. So I can literally toggle my value areas, my profile, my point of control, anything I want to see. Essentially, I can do it from the zone itself. I have both counter trend and trend following targets. This is important. Because if we're going against the market, for example, I want to have a different risk management profile than I would if I am with it. I wouldn't want to hold a trade. As I remember when we were going through the market replay and I said I'd want to get out of this early, right? So there's, there's reasons where I would want to use a, a much more aggressive risk management scenario. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's built in. So TF trend following, CT counter trend, volume ratio. Um, all that good fun stuff. You can even delete zones if you want. You can extend them. All that. It's just a lot. Again, a lot of built-in stuff, and that's only what you're seeing on the zone itself. Now, maybe I want to see all of them. Okay. Maybe I want to do that. So we can toggle them on or off value. I mean, there's so much stuff here. I just can't go into all of it, guys. Uh, your value ratios and all of that. So that again, there's just a lot of functionality. You may want to see some things like, uh, for example your market structure. Notice how clean that chart is. All right. It's because our market structure is literally doing the work for us. It's literally alleviating boatloads of unnecessary analysis for us. If I could turn off the candles and just look at that, you know, I mean, it's definitely not like a line chart, right? But because it's only showing the, 
uh, I would say it's better than a, a line chart alone because it just keeps it simple for us. But my point is that it does alleviate a lot of unnecessary emotions. And as I said in the beginning of this presentation, that's really what the software is about, guys. It's not it's not a, you know, uh, anything other than that. We can also color the background based on that, by the way. OK, uh, based on up versus down uh, market structure, things of that nature. We can use our toggle uh, on or off power zone. I'll look at that in a minute. There's that trade data box, trail stop trend IDs and all of that. Your trend lines. Uh, so a lot of stuff there. We can even show historical trend lines. OK, so I could do that as well. Things like that. So you can see where the trends are broken. As you can see, the trends are very useful. So a lot of things there. Uh, in fact, we're going to be in the room this coming week. We're going to be really diving into the software quite a bit. So what I want to focus on, though, is uh, really in the interior of the zones here. So if I open that up for all intents and purposes, we can get a lot of information here. So let's use this zone here. So I can literally turn on the volume profile. So what you guys may, may not know is that this is only interpreting the information at the time the zone is formed. I can change that, however. All right. So for example, in my profile, notice here where it says all data. You see how that's changing? Okay. So we use multiple algorithms within what most people think is one algorithm. There's so many algorithms in here you couldn't keep track, right? It's a lot of functionality. And, and you know, algorithm is, is just a fancy word for saying that we told it to do something specific. But at the end of the day, we do have multiple different ways of doing that. And what you're seeing here is just the data as it was originally. So what you can see here is notice where the unfilled orders reside, right? See these big spikes up here? That's telling you where it was filled. We want to see where it was not. And as you can see, price literally returns to that exact area, to the lows. Now, sometimes you're going to see the opposite, right? Um, I don't know what this one is. So sometimes you're going to see the opposite. In this particular case, our, you know, we could meet entry maybe right there in the middle, something like that. That's your unfilled orders. Okay, so right there. Uh, but that being said, sometimes you will find that there's unfilled orders at the top of the zone, right? In that case, I would not want to go penetrate deep into the zone. I'd want to be just at the top of it. So we can use this, you know, there's lots of different ways to, uh, you know, a lot of different ways to do things, right? Okay. All right. So we talked about that. The other things that I'll look at real quick is the power zone. As I said, you can manipulate this any way that you want to. So I use this predominantly for trend analysis and or swing analysis. When I say swing, I mean literally just a swing like this, a structure high to a structure low. So if I want to be aware of where the, the filled versus the unfilled orders are in the context of this entire trend, I need to obviously encapsulate the entire trend. And I can see that right up into this area here, there is very little orders that have been filled. OK, so again, it just some of the different ways that I personally use it. And uh, we'll be happy to share that in our room with you all. OK, so I'm trying to think if I've missed anything there, guys. Ninja Shutter 8, uh, bells and whistles, all this, you know, everything is there, like I said. Um, in this, the time frame there, I can manipulate this to whatever I want it to be. And I can literally have it reloaded right here to show on this chart. OK, it does work on um, you know multiple markets, asset classes, et cetera. So you can put it on Forex market. You could put it on futures, equities, you know, all of uh, all of the above. All right. So I've talked a little bit about that, guys. Um, I think this is where I'm going to maybe go back to uh, the slide and, and start a little Q&A here. So if I go back here, uh, what I want to make you guys aware of is, again, you got a brief introduction to our company, kind of what we do, how we do it, what's provided, et cetera, et cetera. So this, what you're looking at here is a supply and demand course that has been, um, you know, it's our, our program since inception. So nearly a decade, as I said. And this is just kind of what it looks like, right? So this is our basic course here. There is a more advanced course as well in which you'll see basically double the amount of, uh, almost double the amount of uh, information, right? So this is what you're seeing. This is what it would you know, visually look like. You got resources built in. Um, you can just simply go through each and every video. And there's also, if you notice here, reviews. I don't know if you guys can see my pointer. Uh, let, me, let me see this right here. Okay, visible. 
There we go. So right in through this area here, you can notice there are reviews. These are actually quizzes that we uh, require you to go through. And what we ask is that you cover it 100% because if you don't, we want you to go back and you know kind of study the, the previous sessions and so on. But everyone has their own way of doing it. And the next thing we'll look at uh, is our trading analysis room. This is basically what it looks like. Of course, this image may not be the best because in the image, the uh, this right here, it looks different on everyone's screen. For example, yours would be full size. But when I snapped a screenshot of it, I just went ahead and snapped it as it was there. This is actually pretty recent here. And so uh, this is a recording of it, by the way. So anyway, my point is the black wouldn't be there. It just depends on your screen size. And so you can uh, also make this enlarge. So if you looked at the top right, follow my pointer there, you can look at it in full screen, but most people prefer not to because they like using the chat and asking lots and lots of questions, which is great. We always encourage that. So that's included as well, guys. We have an amazing group of traders. This is where I get really passionate. We have an amazing group of traders. They're sharing, you know, they go above and beyond to help each other. And d does everyone? No, okay, no, absolutely not. But the ones who do, I commend them for being just awesome. Okay, they, they jump on the forum, they can ask any questions they want. I'd be more than happy to pop out to the forum with you guys in a moment if you want. But basically they go out, they, they load uh, their images, they mark it up, they ask questions, they share their stuff with uh, their trading ideas with others, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it's a fun community and this is what it's all about is being a community, all right? So that too is included, guys. Uh, so this kind of wraps up the presentation. I'm going to get to the, uh, there's a couple more slides I want to just go over real quick. And this is your, the, the most fun part, right? The sales pitch and all of that, get the elephant out of the room. But at the end of the day, guys, what we're trying to do is just build a community and look at the price point. Okay. So we're not trying to overcharge. We're not trying to, uh, you know, do anything other than basically give uh, as much as we can for, for very little cost. So I don't think that you'll find uh, anything better than that. That being said, all of the, what's left in the left column here, all of this in, is included for only the community price. Basically, we're not charging you, um, you know, we're really not even, not even charging uh, for most of this. What those charges, by the way, so what you're really seeing there, let me back up a slide. What you're really seeing there is the obvious. We have to keep, guys, we got to pay the bills, okay? So let's, at the end of the day, let's respect that. Uh, but we include the live room, daily recordings. So every session that you, you know, every day's recording would be available to you, even at that price point, okay? It's very important. Uh, the zone suite also comes included in the community at that price point. Software updates included at that price point. Member forum, extensive support, so on and so forth. So all of that is included, you know, hopefully it's going to help. Our goal, as I said, is to just provide a community for exceptional people. Okay. Cause I know you all are. All right. So finally, the last two slides is this is, you know, this is all about shark indicators, guys. These guys uh, are awesome. And you've seen how their software is, uh, you know, uh, how it can combine itself with ours and function together and how it uses our software to, uh, you know, offer their functionality and so on and so forth. A lot of things there. A lot I, again, Blackbird. I love Bloodhound. I love. I probably use Blackbird a little bit more myself, just because I don't really uh, need a lot of entry signals. I already have them. But where I would say you guys would stand out with Bloodhound are the people that want to develop a strategy of their own using our zones. Okay, so if you you may have you may want to include a stochastics overbought oversold. You may want to do some things like that. Well, you can with Bloodhound and it will formulate an entire trigger signal for you. It's pretty cool. It's very good what they've done over there. I really appreciate it. Now, these are the price points, guys. So if you want, if you decide that you want Blackbird, for example, if you want to go with a year of our community, we extremely discounted the price. So for a year of our community plus the Blackbird license, you're only looking at $16.99. But if you wanted to go with, you know, our lifetime, meaning it's only a one-time uh, fee and everything will be included in that that we've discussed, there's no hidden fees, no ridiculousness, then you're looking at $37.40, which as you can see is a huge discount there as well. Okay, I won't dabble on that too much. Uh, on Bloodhound here, and let me back up, obviously as I did say, Blackbird is included in that. Okay, with Bloodhound, same situation. You can either purchase the one-year 
uh, for $11.99 and Bloodhound would be included, or you can purchase our lifetime community uh, as well as Bloodhound included for $32.95, okay? All right, cool. So let me do this, guys. Now I'll just kind of pop you guys out to, uh, yeah, this is the community here. You can just click on whichever one you want. Now, if you decide that you want to make a purchase with Blackbird or Bloodhound included, here's what you'd want to do. All right, notice right down here, there's a discount code. If you don't use this discount code, obviously it won't work for you. You'd have to contact us. But depending on the one that you want, if you want Bloodhound, then just literally use the discount code Bloodhound. It will automatically discount that for you, okay? Um, if you want Blackbird, literally use the discount code Blackbird. It will uh, do that for you, okay? All right, guys, here we go. So I'm gonna leave it on that page and let's knock out some Q&A. So you guys bear with me because I'm not too familiar here with the, I'm going to have to pop the question kind of tab over here. All right, Will, I'll uh, help you out there. So um, yeah, if you're looking at go to meeting, you can grab whatever section, just grab it and drag it out. And then you can, like, so you'll want to find the questions section and you can drag that and detach it from the rest of the go to webinar and then you can expand it nice actually yeah and I, that awesome thank you so much zach i actually was able to do that all right and Perfect. here so i've got the first question for you will uh okay. so dave is asking uh anticipation entries uh looks like just a double bottom or a double top so okay. this this is going back early in early in your webinar where where you were showing some zones on the chart this was on the chart, perhaps NinjaTrader 8. Well, or actually, 7. no, I think it was in the PowerPoints. Um, okay, sure. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's uh, go back. But here's the thing. The only thing that I'll that I'll ask of, of you guys, because I, I hate to do this to you, is it okay if we kind of stick around for a moment and, and do these Q&A? Because is that okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. Cool. We'll, we'll go as long as necessary for the Q&A. Uh, you guys are so much like me, Zach. Make sure that everybody, everybody's question gets answered. Nice. I'm with you, brother. 100%. So let's go back. Yeah. So this um, is way back when you're talking about anticipation zones. Okay. Just gonna kind of click. I wish it were, you know, the way that these PowerPoints work, I can't just jump to one slide. The way that I used to be able to, there we go. Okay. We're getting right there. That's the one, right? Yeah. There we go. Okay. So the question, uh, if you could just maybe repeat that, the question was basically, uh, they, they he's just looking look at like double, double bottoms tops and double bottoms. Okay. Um, so the, the answer would be, you know, definitely not, but they can be. Okay. And I know that <laughs> that's a little contradiction, isn't it? But what I am saying is I, I think it's better maybe if we just go look at a live chart. How about that? Right. Would that work for everyone? Maybe we do it on the live chart as opposed to, uh, anything else. so, so what we're, what we're talking about with anticipation, is simply that let's let's just open up the price chart and we can use literally like any any level that you want. In fact, let's use like for example in the live room this morning we pointed out. Let's turn all these off for just a moment, okay? I'm going to do this manually for you to give you an understanding. So with this, this was a level that I pointed out in the room this morning. Uh oh, wrong tool. And I said, look, this is where um, you know this is where the supply is, etc. Whatever the case may be, I'll I'll draw to the to the. Uh, What's well, easy to see now, right? But basically, if we go in there and we define the, I won't talk about the whole deal, but that's your supply. Let's just keep it simple, right? So there's your supply. Now, when we were looking at it to sell there, we were looking at it like this, okay? So we're anticipating that there are still sellers there and that if we were do a return to, meaning if we go back there, the context is down, right? So if I, right now, in fact, I can anticipate that there are still orders there, order flow to the sell side, because it moved away in a big red candle. We're in the context of a down move, et cetera. So I can anticipate that there are orders still there and I can go up here and place a sell limit order. So it doesn't have anything to do with double tops, double bottoms, but like I said, it can, because look at this, right? This is that area up here and we use that for anticipation, but we're not using it because it's a double top or anticipating it because of that. We're anticipating it because we had a lot of sellers that push prices away from that area. 
And when we return to it, we're simply saying, I'm looking for future price to turn at this location because it previously showed extreme strength or weakness. In this case, it was weakness. Uh, does that make sense? Let's see, let me look into the... Good, um, let's see, all right. So the next question I've got for you, let's see, it's from Tom. Okay. And he's asking, um, are the zones being created from a higher time frame? No. Okay, pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> pretty straightforward, right? Now, right. I, I'm not going to go into like a lot of, you know, obviously into the, the back end of the code or anything like that. But I will tell you this, our software guys, and I'm not, please don't take this the wrong way. In no means or no way am I trying to say, you know, it's so much better than anything else or whatever. I'm not saying that at all. I can only tell you the facts. I don't even care about, you know, other software. I care about ours. What I can tell you is that our software is massively complex. So on the back end, what you don't know is it is literally pulling so much data and it is indeed pulling it from multiple places to come up with the conclusion. I will tell you that, but it is not, uh, it is not a, no, it's not pulling from a, a higher time frame. All right. Um, let's see. We also, yeah, you know, we do have a bunch of, uh, um, a bunch of people in the room who already own Bloodhound and Blackbird. Nice. So we have the question here that, uh, so you just have to pay a monthly, uh, room fee of $49 a month. And that includes your software too. Absolutely, guys. It does. That's why I wanted to really iterate that price point. We're here. You will see if there's anyone in the room that is with me from the bottom of my heart. My goal is to help whether I can or not. I don't know, but I will never stop trying. The price point, I hope, reflects that all of this, what you're seeing right here, all of that is included for only the forty nine a month. That's correct. So you got the live room, the recordings, the lot, the zone suite, all the updates, access to the forum and support. Yes. All right, let's see. Um, next question from Eva. Uh, do the zones disappear after they've been traded through? So Eva, I think she probably saw that on the on your demonstration, but mm -hmm. Right. She, yeah, like, absolutely. And the answer is simply, yes, they do. Once they are violated, they're considered to be historical and therefore they will no longer display on the price chart. They are still there. Remember, we just need to display them. Right. Yeah. So they're still there. They're just in the historical data now. Yeah. And her follow up question is, can can they remain on the chart for back testing purposes? Absolutely. So let's do this. Okay. You can see every zone that's ever printed. All right. Uh, let's see. Scott is asking, are the targets, how are the targets determined? Are they fixed or Fibonacci extensions? I love that question. They're, they're, uh, they're not Fibonacci extensions. I'll tell you that we, there are multiple. And when I told you our software is complex, I, I wasn't lying. So let's go look at that real quick. Okay. There are multiple ways to do it. Um, so if I look right here, here's our zone. As you can see it, woo, right? Don't get overwhelmed. Don't worry, because we really never need to come here. Okay, it's all done from the chart. But I will show you what you're referring to. Um, the targets, for example, if we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Right here. Notice where we have TF targets and CT targets. There are multiple options in which you can use to determine your profit targets. So we have a variable option, which is based on the volatility of the market. We have a fixed option, which is, as you would you know, imagine, it is literally a fixed number. And we also have a fixed variable option, which is um, automatically derives a one to one to. So let me give you an example. If I said fixed variable and then I said one, three and five, my target one will be uh, don't, you know, this is just your maximum risk here. Okay. It doesn't mean that's what your risk is always going to be, but this in itself, if a fixed variable we, would be a one-to-one -one, and it's automatically calculating that on the back end and therefore printing it for you. Same with the variable. So a variable would be a one-to-one -one of the volatility in the market, three to one and five to one. 
And then if I selected fix, it would be one tick, three ticks, and five ticks. So multiple different options there. Let's see the next one. Um, let's see, yeah, a lot of people are asking is, you know, is Shark software on Ninja 8? And I'll talk to that. Uh, I'll talk about the Ninja 8 for Shark, for Bloodhound and Blackbird later on, but let's get through uh, Will's questions first. Um, all right, just a sec here. Um, Let's see. Yeah, you know, a couple of people have been generally asking, uh, you know, what about if I'm already a Blackbird owner or a Bloodhound owner? Um, you know, they're kind of referring, you know, is there a discount for people who already own Bloodhound or Blackbird? Well, you're seeing it right here. I mean, unfortunately, that is, I mean, guys, we just, we, we can't open our doors if we're any cheaper than that. I hope you understand. Yeah, so you guys can see he's already discounted at 50% off there um, for you guys. So, um, okay, uh, let's see, what's the next one? Um, but, you know, this could be an opportunity if you only own Bloodhound or you only own Blackbird, but you are looking to get the other component, this would be an opportunity to get a good discount, you know, for Bloodhound or Blackbird with Will's Zone software. Absolutely. Let's see, How is, do we do we get pretty caught up on the questions? Um, I think there's a few left here. Uh, okay. There's a lot of repeat questions, so I'm just trying to find some oh, fresh yeah. ones. Oh, let's take your time, man. I, I totally, you know, I, I totally get it. <laughs> I think I've got one here from Peter. Um, so on the power zone volume, um, how far back? can you look on daily? So let's go take a look. How uh, far back can you look on daily, one hour, 15 minutes, time frames? So by, do you mean power zone singular, like this tool that I'm referring to right here? Um, can you confirm or deny? Yeah, so this is for Peter. Peter, this is your question. See, he says the power zone, and then he has in parentheses volume. So maybe he's talking about the Ninja 8 version that shows the volume footprint. Uh, this big, this thing I have up right here. Mm, maybe, I don't know. Um, um, well, I, I guess I can kind of answer the question in a way that perhaps might cover it all. Uh, you can go back as far as your data does. Yeah, I mean, so if you can load it on NinjaTrader, our software can go back that far. Um, there you go. Great yeah. answer. <laughs> uh, if you load it, we'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, hunting for the next question here. Um, <clears throat> hey, RJ is asking, um, how many markets do you trade in the room? Uh, yeah, thanks for that. So I do want to I do want to make a special note here, guys. We're I never market us as a live trading room. As far as your trade call service and all of that fun good stuff, it sounds great, but in the reality, it is impossible for us to do what we do and do that. So I don't want to promote it in any way that way. Do we place trades in the room? Yes. Do we present? Absolutely. So there is that component of it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it's it's there for sure. But what I don't want to do is to make you guys think that you're going to come into a room and we're just going to sit there and go, here's our entry stop target. We're going to literally define everything in a methodical approach so that you know how to do it. And then we're going to go do it, that type of thing. So to address your question as far as how many markets do we do we analyze and and actually trade? I personally do not trade all of the markets. I, to be honest with you, I personally focus more just primarily on the S&P. Sometimes I'll trade, um, you know, if there's like an amazing trade or something like that, maybe oil, gold, or NASDAQ, something. But, you know, pretty much 80 plus percent of the time, I'm literally trading the S&P. Now that is me. As far as the room goes and where do we point out trades? Um, well, let's look at them, right? This was, this is two trades that we, you know, presented on oil. This was a swing trade here. I think you can see the outcome there. Uh, but we just go through, there's a supply level above, 
Um, there's our Aussie level, the swing trade there that's still working out. We got supply above. So as you can see, we go through many, many, many markets. Um, I'd have to go into that. Let's see. I don't even know what that is. looks like it failed though. So there's some failures. Um, all these are more recent trades I haven't even looked at. But yeah, as you can see, we go through a bunch of them, right? So there's some upcoming levels. So I can't really answer. I would say any market that you want to look at though. Raymond is asking, can you show an oil chart, a CL yeah. chart? And then um, at the same time, let's see, who was it? Um, Michael is asking, how long is the offer valid for? Well, uh, which one? It, you referring to like the lifetime or the uh, yearly or the? Well, I guess run through them. Why don't you start with the, the bundle? The bundle I, I, deals and then and then your room deals. To be perfectly honest with you, I, I can't. I haven't made a conscious decision at this time to limit it or to extend it for any for any means. Right now I would say that the prices are definitely good for a week, right? I can I can guarantee that. Uh, I just don't know as far as what you know what the business is going to want to do after that. Okay. Good. Uh, let's see. Um Let's see. Well, this is a question for Shark. Um, Rafa is asking, uh, so if you buy a license for Bloodhound or Blackbird, can it be used for either Ninja 7 and Ninja 8? Yes. Actually, we, um, a year ago, uh, we put out a guarantee that um, if anybody had bought, and this was over a year ago, um, had, had bought, we would guarantee everybody you know, after that time, I think it was uh, what uh, July of last year, we started guarantee that anybody who purchased the Ninja 7 version would get the Ninja 8 version included for sure. So, um, okay, and let's see. Let's see, Tom is asking, do you ever go below a 30 minute chart? Uh, particularly for entries? Um, yes and no. So yes, I do in the room. For myself personally, I prefer to stick with uh, 25,000 volume on the S&P or 30 minutes on uh, pretty much any other market. But uh, in the room, we do have, I guess if I put it to you this way, the, the room of the, or excuse me, the goal of the room is to assist all of you. Right. So what I don't do is limit it and say, OK, we're always only going to look at these time frames. I do have paired time frames as covered in, my, in our course. Uh, all of this is covered 100 percent. There's a full, complete example trading plan and all of that. So it's very methodical. That being said, I have paired time frames that we do like to stick with. But yes, we do look at both larger and smaller paired time frames. Um, let's see. Raymond is asking a good question that we actually we didn't talk about. Um, Raymond's asking, so after joining the community, um, how do I get the Bloodhound and Blackbird templates? Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Raymond, for that, by the way. Really appreciate that. Yeah, we, um, forgot, we forgot to hit upon that point. <laughs> um, we're like, we're failing here. I don't know. What, what's the deal? Uh, no. no, no. So, yeah, guys, absolutely. I've already done all of that work for you. So our um, our installer already includes the Blackbird and Bloodhound templates. So you don't have to do anything. All you need to do, let's say, so the process will, would go like this. Let's walk through it real quick so no one is confused at all. So basically you come here and in order to get, uh, you know, the discounts on Blackbird or Bloodhound, uh, and by the way, guys, just throwing this out there, I know, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but if anyone wants both uh, Blackbird and Bloodhound, just contact me. I'll provide you a, a coupon code uh, and we'll talk about the pricing and so on and so forth for that discount as well. But right now, let's just focus on either or. Uh, but let's say, for example, that you wanted to purchase the lifetime, you wanted to get Blackbird, right? So what you would do is you click this buy now button. You're going to be directed to the registration page. OK, in fact. So if I go over here and I try to register and just close that down, um, what I can do here is scroll down, start filling out, you know, just all you're doing is creating your account. Okay. And then what's going to happen is it's going to put you on an invoice page. 
that invoice page is going to have a discount code field, text field, right? You simply put in Blackbird or Bloodhound and click apply and you'll see it update your invoice there. What will then happen is you'll obviously have instant access to you know, everything included in the plan and you'll receive a welcome email, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll be able to download. So everything is included in your user profile. Our, everything should be, it's, it's extremely user friendly. Um, I can kind of walk you through that a little bit if you want. Um, you guys want, I can kind of log in here. So as you can see, we have uh, just very user friendly um, information here. What to do now, start this, join the room, recordings, uh, download your software, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and in fact, if I go uh, to the community guide, in fact, I'm sorry, there's Ninja Trader 8 and Ninja Trader 7 that you would have access to. Okay, so it's all very user friendly, very straightforward. You'd be able to do it from right there in the event that you want to uh, download the software. But yeah, this is how you would do that. And uh, was there any other question towards that? Um, let's see here. I'm really appreciative that you asked that question. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't really see any other questions kind of related to the the uh, Bloodhound or Blackbird templates, but um, you've already kind of addressed this, but maybe you could just give a simple answer. Tom is asking, how many different futures markets are you watching during the room? So we just kind of go one by one. I'm not watching a plethora of them at one time. We go th like, you know, again, for example, if I do it like this, I literally will go through, you know, a market and we'll go, okay, we're done with that market. There's our supply demand. Uh, levels. This is how we're going to enter at those levels and so on and so forth. And then we go to the next market and then we go to the next and so on and so forth. But yeah, I don't really keep up a watch list of multiple or a plethora of markets all at once. Okay. Let's see. Um, so maybe you could do this while we're finding some other questions. Let's see, Alex is asking, um, can you show your software using like a a 34 range bar. Well, let's see, a range bar, 34 ticks. Uh, what um, what market? Uh, it's I'm not, assuming not saying, something. not saying, but so I guess your choice. Okay, let's. Uh, NQ. Okay, there we go. Alex is saying NQ, 34 range chart. Um, and then while you're doing that, yeah, there was another question about the zone software. Um, Hold on a minute. I don't even think I, I got to load it on this. I was about to. So let's do this. Yeah, sorry. I didn't have my, my software is not loaded on this tab. So I got to go over to this one. Okay. So we're going to go to the NASDAQ, you said. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do have another question from Tom. Okay. Once you're done here. Said 34 range? Yes. Go ahead with your other question if you want. Let's see. Um, so Tom was asking, what's the difference between the supply and demand course versus the advanced trading course? Uh, so it's, the for one, you're going to get all of it irregardless. Right. So it doesn't really matter, but I'll show you. Let me bring it back up. Um, the advanced course includes a lot of, you know, just far advanced material. That's all I can really say. It's just stuff that I've developed over the years that I, you know, it's my own methodology that all of it is, you know, with the, uh, but the advanced goes deeper into the rabbit hole. It really gives more specific stuff uh, about, you know, stuff that you've probably not heard throughout the general industry. Some of it you have, right? I mean, some of you have, but things like, you know, what is an RBR at the RVM, for example? What's a VTC? I mean, things like that, it really takes them in and explains them very, very well. Uh, just kind of simplifies things. All right, so one is basically for like beginners, the, the basic concepts, and then as you, if you stick with it, you then you'll want to learn more and more advanced techniques. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, it's going to start with your basic stuff. And the, the further you and just so you guys know, the course builds on itself. So 
the, you would absolutely not want to jump right into the advanced material because you it would just you'd just be lost. So you want to build from the basic and just keep going down, down, down into the advanced. And because one expects you to have already, uh, in other words, it, it it assumes that you already know what the previous videos and slides have covered. Oh yeah, here we go. The the classic question here: How many computers can you run your software on? Um, you know, with with the purchase. Oh yeah, that is a classic how question. How many computers do you allow to be licensed at any one time? The maximum of two. All right, two. Good. All right, same as Shark. Um, okay. Uh, all right, I think that kind of does it. Um, so, all right, yeah, I think that kind of does it for uh, the questions for uh, for Will there. So let me just kind of address the Ninja 8 questions for shark indicators, and that ought to wrap up uh, this webinar here, So, because we are at the <laughs> hour and a half mark. So you guys are uh, pretty dedicated hanging out that long. Um, Bunch of rock stars, what I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Jeremy uh, of Shark Indicators uh, is working on two main components. Um, one is the conversion interface to convert uh, the Bloodhound templates from Ninja 7 to Ninja 8. So, there, there are some major structural changes with Ninja Trader 8, and that's why it's taking us uh, this long. Um, Will can even back me up on this. He's run through his his number of issues converting his software. So uh, indeed. I don't feel so bad anymore. Um, <laughs> indeed. But, uh, so yeah, so Jeremy's working on this. Uh, we're actually having to build this interface, which is, you know, it's a it's a bummer, but you know, it's just a one-time thing. You know, you only have to use this interface once to convert your Ninja 7 templates into Ninja 8. Uh, because the indicator structure has, has changed from Ninja Trader 8. So that's that's kind of one major component that we're waiting on before we get to the public beta. Uh, and then the other one um, is the new multi time frame um, implementation here for Ninja 8 as well. So, um, and I think Jeremy actually has that one taken care of. So I think we're just waiting on, yeah, getting the interface for the conversion interface from Ninja 7 files to Ninja 8 template files for Bloodhound um, and for Blackbird as well. And so once that's done, we will announce the public beta. And at that point, we should be pretty close. You know, all the major stuff is out of the way. It's just a matter of, you know, getting feedback on just all the little minor uh, tweaks and issues that might come up after that. So we're plugging away. We're getting a lot closer to it. Um, all right. So I think that kind of wraps it up, guys. Nice. Um, hey, look, um, Zach, uh, Ty, seriously, I want to want to thank you guys again for your time. I know we did definitely go over and I want to thank every one of you guys for uh, for the time of being here and also for the questions. Right. I mean, I really appreciate that. If you have any more, please absolutely don't hesitate to contact us. You can literally go to our website right here. Just click contact us. Um, you know, if, or if you want our phone number, whatever you want, you can get it from this contact us uh, link there. So thanks everyone. Really uh, had a great time. Thank you all for everything. All right. Thank you guys. And for anybody who might have gone, come in late, um, we will email out the recordings to everybody that signed up. So you'll get those recordings automatically. So you can watch this again later if you want. Okay, guys. Thank you. And with that, have a good weekend.